we'll now discuss uh, the enzyme catalysis now as you know the uh, catalysis by enzymes as you know that enzymes are biological catalyst now uh, their function is just like uh, any other catalyst but uh, they're very efficient and uh, remember that uh, in our in our body uh, there are many reactions that don't happen uh, under normal temperature and pressure conditions but uh, they happen in uh, the temperature of the body which is uh, just around uh, 98 uh, Fahrenheit and then uh, you can realize that at a very low temperature the enzymes very efficiently uh, carry out those reactions and without enzymes we won't survive and in our body there are thousands of enzymes that are uh, doing catalysis for many important reactions uh, for which we survive. Now uh, the first uh, uh, um, model for enzyme catalysis was put forward by Michaelis and Menten and uh, who provided a very interesting concept uh, of uh, uh, enzyme and uh, how the enzyme actually uh, forms uh, or helps in uh, forming a product from a substrate. So if you consider that uh, there is a substrate, uh, we call it as S. And that substrate is going into product and in presence of the enzyme which we write as E how one can write the kinetic model for this enzyme uh, mediated catalysis or which is known as enzyme catalysis now what the Michaelis and Menten uh, considered is uh, similar like we just uh, talked about so there is a step where enzyme and substrate binds and unbinds together and there is a formation of a complex which is known as enzyme substrate complex. This is the intermediate and that complex actually gives rise to the product. Now, as before we can uh, think about two rate constant K1 and K-1 and uh, K2 for the rate of product formation. And we will also consider the steady state approximation for the enzyme substrate complex. Now uh, the solution is very easy but uh, for uh, my, um, what Michaelis and Menten came up with is uh, cleverly uh, manipulating the uh, reaction, uh, the uh, uh, amounts of enzyme and the substrate uh, because you cannot measure them. Uh, what you can measure uh, is uh, the initial enzyme concentration which you had started with and the initial substrate concentration which you know. These two things you know. And then what Michaelis and Menten asked is that if we know only these two parameters, how we can write the rate of product formation. That is the entire thing. So given I have these two information, how I can write uh, or how I can express this equation, dpdt. So we'll follow the usual procedure uh, using steady state approximation of for the intermediate, which is the enzyme substrate complex or the ES complex. Now. Uh, this DPDT is nothing but it will be K2 into the concentration of this enzyme substrate complex. So we need to know the, this concentration and for that we will use the, as usual the steady state uh, uh, approach and that says that uh, DES DT which is zero under steady state approximation and that is nothing but so it is forming at a rate k1 into e sorry into s it is uh, i mean decomposing at a rate k minus one this giving back the reactant and the i mean reactants which are enzyme and substrate and also it is uh, forming product at a rate like this. So from that you can easily figure out what is the ES. So ES will be nothing but uh, K1 into or we can actually write it uh, slightly differently before we uh, write the equation for the ES. This is nothing but K1 into E 
into s minus k minus 1 plus k2 into es. Now, as I said, that uh, we have no idea on the e and the s, otherwise we could have solved it. All we know that e0 and s0. Now, initially, if we start with uh, the initial enzyme concentration as e0, you can always argue that at any time, there will be some free enzyme available in the reaction mixture. There will be some enzymes which are, which have formed this enzyme substrate complex. So, instead of E, we'll write it as E minus, sorry, E0 minus ES. That's why I did not eliminate ES at this step and or wrote the value of ES and put it back. And similarly, for the initial substrate concentration, if that is S0, so at any point, it will be, there will be some free substrate in the uh, reaction mixture. There will be some enzyme substrate complex in the reaction mixture, plus some substrate has been already converted into the product. Here, once you have the product, the enzyme actually is, uh, uh, you regain the enzyme because it's a catalyst. Now, from that, you can easily figure out what is the, uh, we need actually the enzyme as well as the substrate, uh, so the, at any time, the substrate concentration will be nothing but the initial substrate concentration minus ES minus P. So now you can combine these two and see what we are uh, getting. So, uh, we'll just replace these values of E and S in this equation to get, or we can write it in the next page because we need to do some approximation. So, the uh, it will be uh, K1 into E into S. So, it will be K1 into E0 minus ES. Let us write it. So, it is K1 into E0 minus ES. And then, we have the substrate concentration, which is S, and S is nothing but S0 minus ES minus P. Minus P. And that should be, excuse me, so that should be equal to, or there is another term, it is minus K1 plus K2 into ES minus k1 plus k2 into es that is equal to zero under the steady state approximation so now we'll make a further ap approximation we know that at any point of time this enzyme is basically binding to the substrate but this enzyme substrate concentration is much less than the enzyme concentration itself because the reason is uh, it's, it's much less than the initial enzyme concentration the reason is you started with uh, some amount of enzyme and then only very initially uh, or at any point actually you'll have only few of them are bound to the uh, are present as enzyme subset complex because most of them have if they bind actually they have formed the product or uh, they have actually uh, done something else uh, they have actually gone back to the re initial uh, reactants, which are enzyme plus the substrate. So that will be always less than the enzyme concentration. And you usually start with very large excess of the substrate because you know that enzyme is a catalyst and you need it, uh, a catalyst you need uh, uh, for, a, for a very little amount compared with the reactant. So this S0 is pretty high compared to ES. So we can actually ignore the ES term here. So that is assumption number one. Assumption number two is that if you are asking this question that, uh, okay, uh, at t equal to zero, what will happen? So at t equal to zero, the amount of the product, that also you can approximate to be nearly equal to zero. So if you uh, 
if you add these two things then we can get k1 into e0 minus es and this term will be nothing but s0 because we ignored uh, both uh, this term we can ignore this term also so it is just times s0 minus k1 plus k2 into es that is equal to 0 but this is at the beginning meaning uh, when t tends to 0 meaning it's the initial time while this is always true because the uh, substrate concentration is always much larger than the enzyme concentration initial enzyme concentration which is of course larger than the enzyme substrate complex always so at initial time which is the second condition we have this or we can now eliminate es or evaluate what is the value of es so es will be nothing but if you collect the terms it is k1 plus k2 and then there will be a term which is k1 into s0 so uh, we can write it like this uh, es times it is k1 plus k2 uh, plus k1 into s0 that is equal to k1 into e0 into s0 so es is nothing but k1 into e0 into s0 divided by k1 s0 or you can just write it as uh, yeah that's fine and we can just write uh, k1 s0 at the beginning uh, plus k1 plus k2 so just check uh, once more what are the it should be k minus 1 plus k2 should be k minus 1 should be k minus 1 just k minus 1 okay fine so the rate of product formation which is dpdt at t tends to 0 because that's the initial rate which we call as also v0 which we can write as now which is nothing but k2 into es es evaluated at t tends to 0 and which is given by this so i'll have basically k2 into k1 s0 i'm just writing the s0 with k1 and then multiplied by e0 divided by k1 s0 plus k minus 1 plus k2 and we can divide the numerator and the denominator by k1 s0 so you see there is another k1 s0 here so what we'll get is nothing but k2 into e0 divided by 1 plus k1 sorry k minus 1 plus k2 divided by k1 into 1 by s0 so that uh, we can uh, write in a shorthand form that v0 is nothing but uh, k2 into e0 that we are writing it as v m the, the reason will be clear in a while and then divided by 1 plus all these combinations we are writing as a constant which we know which is known as michaelis constant it is named after leonor michaelis it's michaelis constant into 1 by s0 so if we plot the initial rate remember v is it is not v actually it is v0 which means it is the rate of product formation at a very early time versus the uh, substrate concentration and you will see that at a very very uh, uh, so, I mean a small substrate concentration what will happen 
so this uh, will be a very large this is very a large number right so uh, at a if s0 is very large so what you will have is that km by s0 is a very small number that you can actually ignore so if we plot it in terms of the substrate uh, initial substrate concentration and then we'll see that uh, let us just consider at a very uh, high value of the substrate concentration so if it is a very high value so then uh, 1 by s0 will be very small number so uh, we can ignore this km divided by s0 that term with respect to 1 and then v0 will be nothing but equal to some velocity uh, of the reaction which we are calling as say vm and at a very early, uh, very small substrate concentration, when S0 is very small, then we cannot uh, write it. So, uh, so then uh, let us just do it like this. Uh, so, when S0 is small, then we can write that uh, Km by S0, that is much greater than 1. So, what you have is nothing but it will be vm divided by km into s0 so v0 will be nothing but vm divided by km and then this s0 goes up so it is i see that uh, this vm by km if we uh, consider it to be constant it is a constant because vm is nothing but k2 into e0 k2 is a constant and e0 is initial enzyme concentration which is also constant so uh, it's a constant times s0 so which means at early time it will vary linearly with respect to the substrate concentration so we'll have a just a linear slope and at a very large substrate concentration when this is very high so we can write that km by s0 is much less than 1 which means v0 is nothing but i can ignore this term compared to 1 it is just equal to vm so then it will basically be a constant which is k2 into e0 now that's why it says that the initial velocity can have a very maximum uh, velocity and that's why we wrote it as a vm some textbook instead of vm they write it as v max because it is known as which is uh, basically k2 times uh, the e0 is sometimes known as the v max and which is nothing but the maximum velocity or the maximum rate now what happens is that there are some enzymes uh, in the in your system and when you start with a very very small substrate concentration then there are more number of enzymes than the substrate but if you think about that if you keep on increasing the substrates so then actually all the enzymes all the all the active side of the enzymes will be now occupied by the surface and there is no free enzyme so you cannot have a rate which is now uh, dependent on the substrate concentration even if you keep on adding the substrate all the enzymes right now are occupied by the substrate so you, you basically saturate your system and that exactly what you see here in the uh, following the michael menten equation but always keep in mind that here we are not plotting uh, velocity versus substrate concentration it is the initial velocity because we made an assumption where we showed that uh, this uh, product concentration is almost zero so what you are doing in the experiment is that you are mixing the substrate with the enzyme with the known concentration of the enzyme you are basically adding the substrate and you are measuring the rate at a very early time and then you change the substrate concentration again you measure the rate at a very early time and that way you are measuring keeping the initial enzyme concentration same uh, because you have to keep the k2 into e0 same otherwise vmax will also uh, differ if you vary the e0 also so uh, then you see that uh, it uh, basically gives you a saturation like behavior now uh, in this equation is known as the michaelis menten equation but you could actually write the equation in a slightly different way because always you would like to fit any equation in a linear fashion so you can easily recover the linear equation if you take the reciprocal of this and that was first uh, shown by two scientists uh, Leinweber and Berg 
who just took this Michaelis equation and plotted the inverse of uh, V0, so which is 1 over V0. So if you see, if I write it as 1 over V0, it will be on the right hand side, it will be 1 over Vm plus Km by Vm into 1 over S0. So what we'll have is 1 over V0 is 1 over V max plus Km by Vm into 1 over S0. So how uh, this plot will look like if we plot instead of V0 versus S0, if we plot 1 over V0 versus 1 over S0, of course that will be a linear plot, but let us consider the slope and the, uh, at the intercept. Now think about it, the slope of this reaction, or first let us consider the intercept, if we consider the uh, at what point it cuts the say y axis. Cutting y axis means actually the x position will be 0, so 1 by s0, that is 0 at that point. So it will cut it at 1 over vm. So it will be a linear plot because we can see from here. But what about uh, the intercept at the x axis? So x axis intercept means actually the y value will be 0, so we can put 0 here. And we can ask what is the value of 1 by s0. So 1 by s0 will be nothing but we can take this on the left hand side minus 1 over vm and then we can multiply it by vm into km so it will be nothing but 1 over km with a negative sign. So it just uh, cuts the x-axis at negative 1 over km. So this is negative 1 over km. And this plot is known as line over Berg plot and it is often used and it will be very useful particularly when you consider the enzyme inhibition. Now uh, what is enzyme inhibition? Suppose in every enzyme has some kind of shape because enzyme is very particular for a particular substrate and uh, a very specific substrate can actually get bound to this enzyme and then you form an enzyme substrate complex. just like this and then uh, so this is the equilibrium which we showed and then the this substrate actually forms some different product and then the enzyme releases uh, the substrate and we get the free enzyme back and then the enzyme is ready to bind to another substrate and that is how it works. Now uh, you can see that uh, for a particular enzyme there is a particular substrate. So it's a kind of uh, known as the lock and key mechanism. So you can see it uh, that uh, there is one key for one particular lock. So uh, the binding of the substrate to the enzyme is very specific. So enzymes are very specific in nature. It will not work on a uh, different many different molecules. Sometimes it may. But usually enzymes are very specific to a particular molecules or a particular set of molecules. And that molecular shape and the three-dimensional structure determines uh, which enzyme it is acting, uh, which enzyme is acting upon this molecule. Now uh, once we have this situation, once we have very very large number of substrate, then there is, will be no free enzyme in your system and then you will reach a saturation condition which is here. At a very high enzyme concentration you have already reached the maximum velocity. Now sometimes there is another quantity that you uh, would like to measure that uh, what is the uh, maximum number of uh, enzyme to substrate conversion per minute, what are the number of, uh, 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 number of uh, this thing per minute per enzyme, per unit enzyme concentration. Because if you have more enzyme concentration then you will have more maximum velocity. So that will be nothing but, uh, so what you are asking is basically Vmax by E0. What is the Vmax by E0? And that will be nothing but equal to K2. So this number, uh, this number is known as the turnover number, meaning uh, how many times the enzyme is turning over uh, a substrate into product, it is basically doing this catalytic cycle 
per unit time because there is a time already involved here it's a v max because it's a k2 there it's a rate uh, rate constant so it, there is a first order rates constant which means it is how many times it is doing but we know that it is dependent on the initial uh, enzyme concentration so we are asking this question per unit enzyme concentration say if i take uh, one uh, molar enzyme uh, theoretically or say one micromolar we fix the concentration then we ask this question what is this number and usually this number if you take uh, one enzyme molecule uh, this number uh, usually for most of the enzymes varies from 10 sorry 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 3 which means it does this uh, substrate to product uh, substrate to product cycle uh, about uh, say uh, 100 to 1000 per second but sometimes you can actually go to very high limit like 10 to the power 6 also so every one microsecond it does a conversion which means in one second it does 10 to the power 6 or 1 million uh, substrate to product conversion. Now it, it gives you a feeling how, how enzymes are uh, so efficient, how and why uh, enzymes are uh, so efficient and uh, in converting the substrate and how basically it has a very very efficient rate uh, in the process. Now uh, the next thing we'll just do is that we'll just build up uh, our discussion on this Lineover Berg plot and we'll discuss how uh, enzyme inhibition happens. By enzyme inhibition, uh, we'll see that if uh, there is some other substrate which actually has uh, some, some shape or some other molecule which has the same shape just like the substrate which we call as an inhibitor, if that actually binds to the enzyme, what will happen to the kinetics uh, of the uh, of this uh, enzyme what will happen to this enzyme kinetics and what will happen if we now plot 1 over v0 by versus 1 over s0 in the line of our bark sense so that we'll discuss in the next part